Hi readers, it's Mrs. Justice. I'm going to read chapter 24 called New York City. Have you been to New York City? Well, think about that as I'm reading this chapter. Since it was summer, mom and dad planned for a family vacation after the conference. This time we were going to go to New York City. I was always confused about New York City. Was the city named after the state or was the state named after the city? Whenever we told people where we lived, we had to say upstate New York, not New York. If we only said New York, they thought we were from New York City. I didn't think that was fair. New York City was a lot smaller than the rest of the state. New York City meant Chinatown, and that meant we could buy all the things we couldn't get in New Hartford. So, Mom did all her grocery shopping. She took us to, China, to a Chinese grocery store and told us to pick whatever we wanted. The Chinese grocery store was cramped and crowded and had a strange smell, kind of like the way your feet smell after you walked in the rain. Now, Lizzie said it was because of the dried mushrooms in the window. There were blue crabs in a basket by the stairs and boxes and boxes of sunshine yellow mangoes and sand-colored Chinese pears on the floor. We had to pick things that could keep for a long time, so Lissy pulled out some canned lychees while I picked up a bag of Chinese popsicles and Kiki grabbed some Chinese New Year candy. When we brought the items to the cart, Mom told us to get more. Get three or four packs, Mom urged us. They will have to last you the whole year. By the time we finished picking out everything we wanted, we had two carts full of groceries. It took us a long time to check out, and Dad went to go get the car while Mom paid. The owner of the grocery store came out and helped us put the groceries in the car. He bowed to Mom and thanked her for coming. He gave Kiki, Lissy, and me each a box of chocolate caramels for free. Mom said it was because we gave him such good business, and we had. The whole car was full, and I had to sit on six cans of baby corn for the rest of the trip. After we went grocery shopping, Mom and Dad brought us to a Chinese bakery for a treat. Dad ordered five diamond-shaped pieces of thousand-layer cake, one piece for each of us. It didn't really have a thousand layers, but it was soft, sweet, and very yummy. Can someone get a job-eating cake? Like a professional cake eater? I asked. It was August already, and I still hadn't found myself. <laughs> no, Mom laughed at me. Anyway, you would just get tired of eating cake all the time. I wouldn't, Lizzie said. I can eat cake every day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. The whole thing. Chomp, 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 chomp. You sound just like your uncle, Mom said. He loves cake. Did I ever tell you a story about your uncle and the cake? Here's mom's story called Uncle Shin and the Special Cake. Well, when we were kids, we weren't very rich, so we rarely got anything special. Sometimes grandma gave us little candies or cookies, but never anything much better than that. However, one day, a rich auntie came to visit us. She brought us a big box wrapped with a silky bow. Do you know what was in it? There was a cake inside. We had never been lucky enough to have a whole cake before. It was a frosted white rectangle, rectangle with sugary pink flowers and pastel green leaves. Every inch of the cake held a promise of sweet delight. My sisters, my brother, and I stared at it with big eyes and licked our lips. We wanted to eat it so badly. The worst was my brother, Shin, you know, Uncle Shin. He loved to eat, and he usually got the best of everything. He was the only boy in the family, so Grandma spoiled him. That's mine, he would growl like a starving wolf, his eyes devouring the cake. He wanted the whole cake for himself. While my auntie was talking to Grandpa, Grandma took the cake into the kitchen. She cut it into eight equal slices, one slice for each of us. I couldn't wait. We crowded around her and inspected each slice to make sure they were all the same size. Uncle Shin kept circling us as if he was a hunting tiger. 
I want all the cake. He crept hissing. I want all the cake. Give me all of it. But just as Grandma finished slicing the cake, Auntie called out to say she was leaving. We all had to go and say goodbye. We left the cake on the table and bowed goodbye to Auntie in front of the house. All of us said goodbye and waved, except for Shin. He had disappeared. When we went back to the kitchen, there was Shin. He was devouring the cake like a hungry pig, crumbs and frosting decorating his mouth and nose. He was such a greedy boy, and he was determined to have the whole cake to himself. But we had only left him alone for the cake with the cake for only a minute, so he wasn't able to eat the entire thing. Do you know what he did in instead? He spit on all of the other pieces. It was gross. He ruined everyone else's pieces so he could have it. And he did. He watched, we watched him eat every piece. What a spoiled boy he was. But that night, he had a horrible stomach ache and no one felt sorry for him. I would have just eaten around where he spit, Lissy said. Ooh, we all said together, yuck. What would you have done? Enjoy your afternoon.